Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. Today is a three-part series of some restaurant gems in an industrial park. We're in Halava Valley today, and um, we're gonna check out some, actually two restaurants, or a lunch wagon and a restaurant, from two different viewers that were recommended to me. So let's go. So once you're in the valley, you're gonna come to this restaurant called Sweet Corner Cafe. You can see their cute little sign right there with the little lucky cat. You can also see some landmarks, Aquariums Hawaii, and Body Balance, Wags and Wings Hawaii. It's in here. Uh, right across the way is another part of Menehune Water. But when you pass the main street with the, um, I believe the animal quarantine, you're gonna see the other part of Menehune Water. And you're gonna take a right on that small road and that's where they're at. So it's got different units here. We're gonna follow the sign so you can see where to go. And it's over here. Down the steep driveway. And you're gonna see their little flag. It's hard to see right now, but you see it right here. So you can use it as a landmark. You're gonna see the other business, Wags and Wings Hawaii. Uh, supposedly you can park against the wall here there's some parking here, but there's lots of street parking as well. And here it is, Sweet Corner Cafe. So let's go check it out. Right in this hallway here, how interesting. I can smell the food already, and you see the little sign there. So that's where you know where you're at. Okay, we got in here, service is super friendly. They have a little space with only about two or three tables to sit down and they are fans of cats. So you can see this cute little cat thing here and they have infused oil, so it smells really nice in here. And on Saturday, she says they have cats where you can play with them. And um, I'm totally allergic to them, but if you love cats, you can come on Saturdays and they put them here and it's like a little cat cafe. Really nice. Okay, so our drinks came out. It comes in these cute little bags. So I got the latte matcha, which is uh, green tea and milk. She says they use organic green tea and organic milk as well. Mm. Refreshing and very cold and creamy. And if you like Japanese green tea, you'll definitely like this. We also tried the pink lemonade. Mm -hmm. Slightly tart and um, has that berry taste too. So not too sour, but nice and sweet. Okay, our food came out and we ordered two dishes. They are also known for their handmade um, noodles, which we didn't get. I'm just not feeling it today, but we might come back because the lady's super nice and she does poke bowls. Not feeling that right now either. I just saw their menu and these are the things we craved at the time of looking at it. Um, this is house made fried rice. So this place kind of has like a little bit of a Chinese flair. Some ribs. So let's dig in. I'm gonna try the fried rice first. Looks like it's got some bacon in it with some cabbage. Mmm. Very bacony. If you like bacon, you'll definitely love this. 
It's very peppery too. I like pepper. And the rice has a lot of flavor to it, but it's got some onions and a little bit of sliced cabbage in there with the bacon. And that gives it a crunch and a different texture contrast. Really, really delicious. Let's try this rib. You get three pieces, they're pretty meaty looking. Sweet, smoky, tender. It's not fall off the bone tender, but just like when you put it in a smoker. So when it falls off the bone too much, it's usually boiled, but this is like a perfect texture to me. And it's got a smoky flavor. Um, I don't know if it's really smoked, but it has that flavor and it has a nice, good, traditional barbecue sauce on it. So it's not Asian in any way, it's just your typical delicious barbecue. Next up, we ordered the chicken and waffles, but instead of regular waffles, you get the Asian bubble waffles that you see a lot when you travel in Asia. The smell is good, it smells amazing, like your typical sweet, crunchy, sugary waffle smell. It's got two huge pieces of chicken. Uh, she gives you some hot sauce for your chicken and some real maple syrup. Okay, so let's try this waffle. It's very thin, but it's got that bubble. I've never had one before. Very sweet and crispy. Okay, this is the chicken. I don't know if you can see that, but it's smoking hot. It's still got steam coming off of it. Super crunchy, but very moist inside. I don't know how she did that. It's not dry at all, and it's very, very moist chicken. It's very tender and just like flavorful too. Very, very good chicken. And I don't know, it looks like it's white meat, but it's not dry at all. Very, very tender, but very flavorful. This hot sauce is super delicious with the chicken. And then it's got that coating on the outside. Um, and you just either pour it on or dip it. And the coating is really crunchy. So it's the crunchiness of the coating and then the softness and tenderness of the inside that's not dry. Super ono. A very different take on chicken and waffles because when you when it comes out you see these two big fillets of chicken and you wonder like that doesn't really look like fried chicken with the bone in or like little pieces of chicken but i'm telling you even though it looks like two big slabs of chicken it's very delicious um everything i've tried so far that we showed you everything seasoned very well and the cook is a wonderful cook they know how to do stuff, so I can only imagine all their other dishes and that they make their own noodles, like she told me. The lady said she's very shy, she doesn't want to be on camera, but she's telling me these things on the side that um, they make their own noodles. So definitely try that too if you're interested in coming here. Also, if this is out of the way for you, they do DoorDash, if you're kind of at least close by. and. Um, she says people have been coming here during the weekdays for lunch it gets really busy but she's open till like 8 p.m and some days on the weekend she's open at 9 p.m so like usual like i always say i put all the hours the address the phone number in the description box below so definitely check it out if you're interested in coming here so you come at the right time but she's open early for breakfast too so they serve breakfast and they also do dinner kind of quite late for a cafe. So if you come a little later during dinner time, all the workers are gone in this industrial park and there's plenty of parking on the street. So yeah, definitely do DoorDash if you don't want to drive here, they do deliver. If you do come here, I suggest calling your order in um, if you're gonna eat in, because it does take some time, everything is made to order, or call it in and pick it up for takeout and go eat dinner if you're too lazy to cook. There's something really special about putting syrup on fried chicken pieces. Some people that aren't from the United States think it's a weird thing, but you must try it, it is delicious. So um, I was just talking to our server and I think she's also the part owner of this restaurant. She says her and her parents are from Macau and that's why they have the Portuguese egg tarts. So, and you see all the Asian kind of Chinese style type of food, but they're not from actual Hong Kong, it's Macau. So how interesting is that? You don't really see that kind of um, restaurant serving that kind of stuff with that influence. So she says that they have a certified bakery where they bake their baked goods. And she gave us a 
croissant that she says is one of their top sellers. It's their chocolate croissant, and they bake everything. And it's nice and warm and toasty, and we're gonna try their Portuguese egg tarts later after our meal, but let's dig into this. Oh wow, listen to that crunchiness. So flaky. So this is the inside. Look at all the flakes in that croissant. And then they drizzle it with chocolate. And there's also powdered cocoa on it as well. Mmm. Wow. That is flaky goodness. What a great croissant. This could match up to La Tour Cafe or something like that. What great skill to bake and just that cocoa, that cocoa taste. That nice rich chocolate taste, but it's not too sweet. This would go great with coffee for breakfast. So remember, they're open for breakfast. So if you're looking for some homemade pastries, definitely come down here for that. Totally raving about this croissant. It's just so flaky, it just melts in your mouth and it just disintegrates. It's so light and fluffy in texture. One of the best croissants I've tasted in a while. Just amazed. Another thing she said, Chelsea said that um, this is also with her parents' this business. Her mom is a vegetarian, so they have a lot of vegetarian options. So if you are a vegetarian, definitely check out Sweet Corner Cafe. They have a pretty extensive menu for vegetarian and vegan items. Okay, the last dish we're gonna show here at Sweet Corner Cafe is their Portuguese egg tart. And like I said, their family is from Macau and it is baked fresh every day and it's nice and hot. Ooh and um, you can see they're flaky. She did say they're flakier than the Hong Kong type um, custard tarts that you may be familiar with, but same kind of principle. She says they're, um, like I said, from Macau, so there's more Portuguese influence. So uh, that's why her crust is a little bit more flaky than the Hong Kong ones. Those are a little bit more crumbly. So they do resemble the Portuguese eggs tarts um, in Portugal. So I'm gonna cut it in half and we're gonna try this. And these are not like the ones you get in Chinatown. This is piping hot and fresh from the oven. Delicious. You're not gonna find anything like that hot and fresh, except here. The custard's sweet and delicious. I like that it's warm. Gives you a nice warm feeling inside. And definitely the crust is nice and flaky, like a delicious flaky phyllo dough type of pastry. And it's nice and buttery. You really gotta try these. These, however, are very expensive to some, but I think it's worth it. I know that baking is very hard to do. She did say that they can only make 25 of these tarts a day. So um, you better come here quick if you want to try it, because it probably does sell out, since they only can make limited amounts every day. But definitely, I think worth the money because of all the hard work that goes into it and making the custard and the crust does take a lot of time. I shouldn't be showing this but it is so pretty I, I just want to because look at these colors. Uh, she said it's not on the menu and that's why I don't want to show it to you because you might not be able to get it. But if you come here and mention that you saw this on this video, maybe she might be nice to you, you and Chelsea might make you this drink. But this is the butterf butterfly pea which we've shown the rice at Sigma Te, uh, that beautiful purple color. It's a natural color from the butterf butterfly pea flower. And she said underneath is lemonade, so let's try it out. Hmm, very interesting. It's a nice floral taste. Um, just that when you kind of breathe out, you get that smell of flowers. It's kind of interesting. But initially when you drink it, it doesn't taste like much, a little bit herbally. Yeah, interesting, when you get to the bottom and it starts to mix, then you get that nice sweet tart lemonade taste. Very delicious drink, so maybe if you get friendly with Chelsea, she'll make you one. All right, so that's about it for Sweet Corner Cafe. Definitely come and check them out. It's uh, only been open since August, the end of August, she said. So they're a brand new up and coming 
restaurant here in the middle of Halava Valley. Uh, weird spot, but they're open late, like I said, so there's lots of parking on the street. Uh, if it's after hours and all the businesses close up, there's tons of parking on the street. Come on down, uh, very chill environment. If you have kids, come on a Saturday morning and enjoy the little cats. It's like a little cat cafe if you're into cats. So thank you, Chelsea, for in inviting us into your restaurant. Um, even though she didn't even know I was coming. And thank you f to Allie, who also suggested this place. I didn't even know about it. She Instagrammed me and let me know. So thank you very much for your suggestion. I really enjoy this place and I definitely come back. So come to Sweet Corner Cafe here in Halava. Beautiful food, beautiful service. Chelsea is a wonderful person, great drinks, and just a very unique menu. Uh, definitely try their poke as well and their homemade noodles and uh, their pastries. So off to the next place. All right, our next destination was also suggested by another viewer on Instagram and it is called Bambucha Lunch Wagon. It's in Halava Valley on the way to Sweet Corner Cafe. If you take um, the main road towards the um, Menehuni Water area or the Halava Correctional Facility, it's right there on the sidewalk area in the beginning. So it's not too far from the main intersection where you enter Halava Industrial Park. It's uh, the gate to the Sheriff's Department or something like that it has a sign there but you can't miss it there's another lunch wagon right next to it and a lot of people park on the sidewalk area it's like a big uh, flat area so there's enough parking for your car and when I went there there were three other cars there and there was still parking for maybe two more cars so pretty um, popular area with the lunch wagons but yet you can probably find a space it might be really crowded during peak lunch hour but I went there right when they opened at 10 o'clock and they close early at about 2 I'll put the hours in the description box below again but I got two of their items every day they have different specials they're known for their patella stew unfortunately it wasn't today's special it's not an everyday item but it's I think offered once a week but they had another thing that I saw on their Instagram and I'll also put their Instagram page information in the description box is their baked spaghetti it just reminds me of school because I thought school had really good baked spaghetti it kind of gives you nostalgia and look at that cheesiness of the spaghetti you get a toss salad or mac this is small because I got the mini but I got a bigger plate for my second option it smells wonderful and you can see all that gooey cheese on there and woo, it looks nice and soft. And let me tell you, this plate is super hot so it's hot off the stove or the oven so you're going to get a really nice hot meal. Wow, that's some cheesy goodness. Really good baked spaghetti. You can't see everything because it's all bunched together, but you got the salad and you also have a dinner roll under here that sops up all that cheesy um, marinara sauce. And there are pieces of ground beef in here. Really good pieces of ground beef, pretty chunky. The noodles are a little bit softer, but it's probably because it's baked. But it does remind me of school baked spaghetti. It gives that nice comfort feeling and a lot of ground beef in there, big chunks. The roll is smashed in there and it got kind of wet, but you get this big roll. So it's like a dinner roll. If you want extra, they will charge you, I think it's 50 cents it said, if you want more bread, but this is more than enough for me. It's not pretty looking since it was sitting under the spaghetti, but let's give it a try. Mmm. It's a sweet roll, so it reminds me of King's Hawaiian Rolls. So if you like those, it goes really well with the spaghetti. And then you get the toss salad. You get Thousand Island or Ranch as your dressing. And it looks like romaine. I think the ranch goes really well with the tomato. Kind of cools off the acidity. But it's pretty creamy because it has a lot of cheese in the spaghetti. So not too sweet, not too acidic but a just right, really, really good old school spaghetti. And if you're really into spaghetti and you want a bigger plate, they do have regular plates. Like I said, again, that's a mini, so it's cheaper. And if you have a smaller appetite, you don't have to spend as much, but the bigger plate obviously is a little bit more expensive. 
All right, off to our next dish. And what I like about this is, it, I'm not sure if you can see it, it is steaming hot. This plate is so hot to the touch, which is great because you know your food has been made to order and it was quick and it's just a really hot, nice meal. Um, this is their famous fried noodles. I've read people said that it reminds me of the Heights Drive-In noodles. I'm not sure, you tell me if you've ever tried it, but usually they pair their noodles with another dish of the day. Today is shoyu chicken, so it's their special, but they do have the noodles every day, and it's usually paired with uh, terry beef or hamburger steak, but today it's shoyu chicken. You also get a scoop of mac salad. And in this plate, it's just like a carb bomb. You also get two scoops of rice, so wow. Let's try the noodles first. You get some kamaboku and some green onion in these fried noodles. Wow, great flavor. You can taste like that dashi uh, powder that they probably fried it with uh, that comes with saimin. So it's got really good flavor. I like green onions, so it gives it a crunch here and there where it's sprinkled on, and the kamuboku is great. Um, I don't see any meat in it, but it's cool. It's very flavorful. So no spam or sausage or anything like that. This is pretty good noodles, bro. Wow. And they give a lot of food. I will say um, they're very generous, so you're not going to go walking away hungry. All right, let's dig into the shoyu chicken. They did put a little bit of sauce on the rice, which is awesome because I love shoyu chicken, the juices, and you put that on rice. Wow, really good. So chicken thigh, pretty good meat, nice and soft, came right off the bone. It's really soft, and then the skin, if you're into the skin, has a little bit of char marks on it. So I'm not sure if they char the chicken before boiling, but um, it's super soft. As you can see, it's already starting to be stringy. So super soft, show you chicken meat, and the flavor's good. I think it could penetrate a little bit deeper into the shoyu chicken, but overall, a really good shoyu chicken with that nice shoyu flavor mixed with a little bit of sweetness. All right, let's try the mac salad. Looks like there's shredded carrots in there. The mac salad's a pretty standard mac salad. It has a little bit of tartness to it, so I'm not sure if they put a little vinegar in there, but um, it's all right. And then um, just wanted to show you how soft this chicken in is. It just falls off the bone from the thigh and it's super soft tender meat super good and so generous with the food it is definitely worth your money this is a massive plate lunch and if you're not one to have shoyu chicken or hamburger steak with it they also have the noodles with the classic terry burger so that's like an old school thing with the burger and then a side of noodles so there's that as well and remember check their instagram for their specials of the day and every day there's something new along with their regular menu. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know their real name, but it's Love Reigns on Instagram, their handle for suggesting this place. It was pretty ono, um, very big portions, very good service too, very, very friendly and fast service too. Okay, our last stop in Halava Industrial Park is the famous Anis. If you've never heard of them, you probably find their sweetbreads in Longs and other places that sells them uh, for you to buy. It's like Portuguese sweet bread, but they also do other things. And what they're famous for is their butter rolls. They have different flavors from cappuccino, lychee, blueberry, strawberry, guava. Even right now they have a pumpkin butter and I'll show you what it's about. One of their more popular ones is Lily Koi and that's what I got. So their butter rolls come in this huge container and it's already like this and you just grab and go. It's already made and they're all labeled with the different flavors and there's also a label on the top so you know what you're getting. Um, this one, like I said, is the Lily Koi one. It's one of their more popular ones. Another popular one is Guava. And um, I also like the Blueberry. I've had that as well. In this container is 12 roll, roll, so it's good to bring to work, and that's how I found out about them. We always, usually once in a while, maybe three times a year if we have something special, either me or somebody else will buy these, and it's for everybody to take to have coffee with. So it's really 
a good thing to bring to a party or just enjoy with your family. Also, I must say that there are two different ones. They'll have one that says Lily Koi Roll or Lily Koi Butter. So make sure you get the one that says butter on it, no matter what flavor you get, because that's the best one. So it is wrapped in saran wrap, so you're going to have to unwrap it, but it keeps it fresher. So you can see how soft it is, and inside has that creamy flavored fruit butter. So this is Lily Koi, which is another word for passion fruit. And it's just so soft and just a tender piece of bread. And it's pretty much like your Portuguese sweet bread. And it's so good with this fruit butter. The homemade butter they make is so good. It really has a bright Lily Koi taste to it. And it looks plain because Lily Koi is kind of yellow. So it kind of just looks like butter. But if you get the blueberry or the strawberry or the guava, you'll see the color of the fruit in there, the reds and the blues and the pinks. But don't let this fool you. This is really good. It looks like plain butter, but it definitely isn't. Definitely give this a try. It's one of the hidden gems in Halava. Their bakeries always making good stuff. They don't only do baked goods. They do um, with their croissants they bake. They have sandwiches, so they have pastrami and turkey sandwiches, grab and go out of the fridge. So also if you're in a rush, you can get a sandwich to eat for lunch. And the bread is so soft, it just almost melts in your mouth. And the bread itself is also sweet. It's, um, if you never had Portuguese sweet rolls in Hawaii, it's almost like a, uh, I wanna say like a King's Hawaiian sweet roll. That's what it's pretty much. Uh, using that recipe as a Portuguese sweet bread. Sometimes early in the morning, if you go really early, it's super crowded in there and it's very tiny in there. So, you know, you just have to have a little bit of patience. But the good thing, like I said, is most of these rolls are already on these um, shelves. So you just grab and go and pay. You don't have to ask her to get something. The ones in the front You'll get your typical long johns, your glazed donuts, some scones, and other things that she will grab for you. But everything's quick and already made. So definitely check out Unis if you're into sweets. I think they're one of the better bakeries that do unique things uh, that you can't find anywhere else on the island that bakes these kinds of rolls with these fruit butters. And I like that you can buy a whole bunch because you can share it with people. And if you are alone or a small family, you could probably definitely freeze this like bread and microwave it for a little bit, maybe 30 seconds when you're ready to eat it so it doesn't go bad if you can't finish it all. And it would be nice and warm with the melty fruit butter to go along with your coffee or tea. It is quite expensive for the whole pack, but you have to remember you're getting 12 rolls and it is really worth it. I think it's super delicious no matter what flavor you get. They're all really good. Another good thing is when you enter Halava, um, that industrial park or the valley, uh, there's one road that, that takes you in. It's going to be the first traffic light in there and you're going to take a left and Ani's will be right there on your right, right before the Halava uh, district park. Uh, the parking is small, but if you go kind of off peak hours, maybe like 10-ish, 9-ish, um, there's usually parking there. When I went, there was about three stalls open, but it can get quite crowded. But just be patient. Like I said, it's in and out. So people uh, buy their stuff, grab it and go. So people are always coming and going. So you can just wait till somebody leaves and then take their spot. So I would say the Lily Koi butter and the blueberries are my favorite cream butters. But if you've ever tried these rolls, tell me what your favorite flavor is in the comments below. All right, so that ends our Halava Industrial Park tour of food. Who would have known that there's these great places to eat in this industrial park? And even though it's an industrial park, everybody's welcome to come here and enjoy the food so you don't have to work in this area or have a purpose to be here to enjoy the food that these restaurants offer. Another good thing is when you're coming from town, um, you can take the Halava cutoff and then you know, you come in and grab your stuff, and then when you get out, you can just jump back on the freeway going westbound. Same thing if you're going eastbound, the 
on-ramp to the freeway is right there at the last light exiting out of this park. So it's really convenient to grab your food and still get back on the freeway. So I hope you enjoyed this episode about the gems that I found in Halava Industrial Park. Thanks to two viewers for suggesting the other restaurants. And I hope you come and support these people because they make exceptionally great food in a place that you would never think you would find this kind of stuff. So until next time, I'll see you again next week. If you like this, press the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on another food adventure next week. Peace out, take care, and have a great weekend.